Okay, now I'd like to reconvene the regular afternoon meeting of the Township of Langley Council. Uh, the next item are presentations, and we have Ms. Ginger Sherlock here from the Langley Emergency Program. Welcome here. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Hoping everybody had a chance to get outside and enjoy some of that lovely sunshine. Oh, yes. Oh. Oh. My condolences. I I got a nice walk in, so. Oh, there we go. All right, well, I just don't tell anybody. Right. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for your time. Uh, it's gonna be short and sweet today, as always. Uh, I'm here to share some EP Week activities with you and provide a copy of the Auditor General for Local Government's Emergency Management Considerations for Local Government Council Members. Public Safety uh, Canada supports an Emergency Preparedness Week every year. And this year, uh, it's May 6th through 12th, 2018. And they do have many resources available on their website, just so you know. Um, here in Langley, though, uh, we are taking the entire month to get ready. So our motto and goal for this year's campaign is ensuring families are ready. So look out for the hashtag, Family Ready. That's what we're doing. We're engaging the public in three ways, providing a pet first aid course so individuals can take care of their four-legged family members, and that's always very popular. We're uh, conducting uh, four of family and personal emergency preparedness sessions that speak to what to expect, how to stay safe and be prepared, and we are hosting an open house. This is the first time in, in our program that we are inviting the public to come and see what we do in the Langley Emergency Program and actually learn about hazards, enhance their readiness and help others within the community so they actually learn about what it is to be part of our team. So these sessions are happening within the Langley communities of Aldergrove, Brookswood, Fort Langley, Murrayville and the city. So they're all over. Oh. Uh, we're also engaging and supporting various partners and agencies. I'm delivering a personal uh, preparedness session workshop to the Canadian Council of the Blind, uh, the BC and Yukon Division. Uh, our emergency support services team members are conducting a functional reception centre exercise. We are inviting staff and partner agencies to learn from the Calgary floods with Tom Sampson, Calgary's Director for Emergency Management. And we are conducting a Fraser River Freshet Planning Session with partner agencies sharing preparations and planning activities. Whoops, anyway, next, there we go. And please accept a copy, they are on your desk, of the Auditor General Local Government's Emergency Management Considerations for Local Government Council and Board Members. Published this month, this perspective series booklet focuses on the importance of emergency management. The bottom line is that this report is we cannot do it alone. Now that's what this, this is, if, when you read this, this is all about. And we have to build partnerships. So I just wanted to sort of facilitate a little bit for you so that when you're reading it, you know the answers to some of the things that might be percolating up as you uh, read the booklet. So here in Langley, we do this well, okay? In fact, Langley is looked as a model for the rest of the province when it comes to its collaborative emergency management approach. An example of this is our emergency management structure, which is defined by the joint agreement between the city and the township for the Langley Emergency Program and its uh, reflective bylaws. An example of our planning, this document that you're about to read also focuses on drinking water. Emergency management has been included in the planning process regarding this critical resource. So that's important. Some municipalities, it's not engaged. An example of our response, the inclusion of four agencies within the Emergency Operations Centre as information officers. So we have the city, we have the township, we have RCMP, and we also have the school district as part of the information officers team. So it's very inclusive. Uh, and lastly, an example of our recovery, the inclusion of Fraser Health Authority, Lions Society, Langley Seniors Resource Society, Mental Health, uh, I want to make sure I don't miss anybody, Emergency Management BC, Victim Services, 
Ministry of Social Development and in Social Innovation, BC Housing, the Salvation Army, Sioux Chi, and the Canadian Red Cross <laughs> at recovery meetings after recent devastating and tragic apartment fires. So we do this very well. Okay. Well, that was really just to let you know about it. So thank you, as always, for your continued support regarding personal preparedness which in turn increases our community's resilience. And last thing I'd like to mention is last Wednesday, Emergency Management BC at a regional meeting acknowledged the Township of Langley and the Langley Emergency Program for their contributions during the provincial flood and fire responses of last year. So uh, I would like to present the mayor and council members with that plaque that acknowledges the township for their contributions and support. Thank you. We'll, so. get a, we'll get a photo here if you want to come out. Okay, great. Yes. So any questions before I disappear? I know you have a lot on your plate, so. <laughs> no, we're, thank you very much for that, and thanks for all the, all the work You're that awesome. you do. Thank you. Okay, now we move on to reports uh, to Council. F1 is Agriculture Land Commission Application 100335. That's a Janssen's. Could I have a motion, please? A motion. Council Quali, seconder. Council Whitmarsh, discussion on F1. See none, I'll call the question. Motion carries with uh, Councilor Richter, Councilor Arneson, Councilor Davis opposed. Move on to correspondence. Uh, there are two items. Could I have a motion to receive both? Councilor Davis, seconder is Councilor Arneson. Uh, any discussion on receipt? Call the question. Carries unanimously. On G1, there is a clerk's note that we consider raising the fibromyalgia, fibromyalgia flag. Sorry, I'm having trouble with that one today. Uh, do we need a motion for that, Ms. Bauer? Can I have a motion, please? Okay. Councilor Arneson, second by Councilor Quali. Discussion on that? Seeing none, I'll call the question on G1. Carries unanimously. And we move on to minutes of committees. H1 is Heritage Advisory Committee and Recreation, Culture and Parks Advisory Committee. Could I have a motion to receive H1? Mm -hmm. Councillor Davis, seconder. Is Councillor Arneson? Any discussion on that? Seeing none, I'll call the question on H1. Carries unanimously. Okay, Councillor Long moves H2. Uh, could I have a seconder, please? Councillor Arneson. And uh, discussion on H2. Okay, I'll call the question on H2. Carries unanimously. And we move on to um, I-1, Joint School District Number 35, Municipal Liaison Committee. Um, minutes, could I have a motion, please? Councilor Quali, second by Councilor Sparrow. Discussion on that. Seeing none, call the question on I-1. There we go. Yeah. Oh, you did? Sorry. I'll cancel. I, I didn't realize I didn't see it. I'm going to... Okay, I'll, um, your, your button didn't come on for some reason. Oh, okay. Councilor Richter, do you have a question on the, on the minutes, or I'll just go to Councilor Long. If, if, yes. no, okay, thanks. We did. He just had a question. Councilor Long? And my apologies. I did, I did approve Sorry. vote for the minutes, but I was just curious in here, and I don't know if, if uh, uh, those at the meeting can expound on the, the use of the Kinsman Center. I guess... That might be a little touchy too, but I mean, they're, they're expressing some interest in using the Kinsman Center, and many in the in the Oligo community are asking what is happening with the Kinsman Community Center. So I guess staff will get back to us at some point, at appropriate time, to see uh, who's all vying for that wonderful space. Mr. Backen, do you have any comments on that? 
That's correct, Your Worship. We have received some expressions of interest. Our protocol, however, is to look to other levels of government, such as the school board, to see what their interest is and work our way down. So, And that's what's happening here, then. Yeah, very interesting. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Quali, did you have anything on this? No. Okay. Okay, so uh, now we'll move on to other business. Is there any other business? Uh, Councilor Richter. Yes, I'd, um, I'm going to put forward the following motion. Whereas the formation of a community input group task force is taking place too close to the next municipal election and therefore will likely be politicized. Therefore, be it resolved that all activities pertaining to the community input group task force be postponed to November 2018 under the jurisdiction of the newly elected Township Council. I so move. A seconder. Councillor Long seconds it. So um, just to, I'll just, um, you know, it's a motion, and because of the uh, timeliness of it, then certainly we'll accept this motion on the floor. So um, I'm going to clear the queue here. Does anybody wish to speak to this? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm going to call it oh, Council Long. Well, I'm, yes, I'm going to support it. It, it, uh, it, it. It's a great idea that, uh, that, that came out of this council table. Uh, it was in a public meeting. Uh, to form a task force, but when you think about the timing and that, uh, I don't know if anybody else realized that in early September, nominations open for the uh, candidates for new council and it's going to be fully into election year. It's already starting in many places already. I don't know if a, if a task force can really accomplish what it, it's intended to do in that short time. Uh, it'd be a wonderful gift to the new council to have uh, this idea already put together and formed in November to provide input to uh, the next four years for whoever happens to sit in these chairs. Yep. Okay, I'll just uh, speak to this. I won't, uh, I won't be uh, supporting this. Uh, council has a motion that um, uh, has directed staff to uh, go out and advertise. Uh, we've got some very good uh, people who, um, who have uh, put their names forward and uh, uh, Council uh, uh, is uh, moving forward with that, so I can't support this. I think it's too late, and I think it's great to have an, an input group, um, committee uh, made up of residents of our community and business people uh, in our community to have some input, and hopefully something really good will come from this, uh, and it will be a lasting legacy of this council have started this. Uh, so I won't be supporting that. Thank you. Councilor Whitmarsh? Uh, yeah, I also won't uh, support this. Um, I think that... Uh, we should be accepting and uh, wanting to have public input at any time of the year and any time during the term and, and not restrict it to only the first three years of a term. And then when we get into the last six or seven months of an election season, we decide that we don't want to hear from the public anymore. I think this is a great opportunity here from the public. And I think it's an opportunity for them to give information and to uh, look at things that are important to Langley and bring that forward to that to our recommendations will be part of uh, council priorities in the, uh, with the new council uh, for them to begin to think about and just have some feedback. So to me, this is a great opportunity for feedback. We should encourage more feedback as much as possible and uh, to try and limit it to only the first part of the, of the uh, term would, be, uh, would, would not be appropriate in my mind. Thank you. Councilor Richter. Well, the, um, the issue from my perspective is one of governance in the sense that we can't force the new council to do anything that the new council doesn't want to do. And therefore, if the process has its inception with the new council, uh, then the new council can oversee the entire process and will probably be in a much better position to willingly embrace the suggestions that have come forward from the group. Um, there's nothing in this motion that's saying we don't want um, public input. Certainly people can continue to come and talk to this council, but we have a very limited time left in order to make decisions, and I think that um, the information that comes out of this task force is probably best left in the hands of the new council because they're going to have a four-year time frame to make that input count. Thank you. Councilor Qualley. Thanks. Speaking of governance, I'm a little confused about the process here. Mm -hmm. it, it did so so um, there's a motion on the floor. Um, it, it, um, uh, I know that we've acted on this. However, there's a time, um, it's time sensitive because the meeting has been scheduled for April the 30th and we don't meet until then, so it's best to deal with the motion now. Yeah. Ha addressed this motion, yeah. haven't we, so, already? 
So, Your Worship, I could help. This this actually to. relates to the March 19th, 2018 motion put forth by Councillor Fox as amended. So as we understand the motion that's being suggested now is a deferral of any activities under that motion until November of 2018. Um, so that's different than any other processes that might have been in place for selection or otherwise. This is the whole thing where it is right now going forward. So it'd be appropriate for council to dispose of this at this point because of your, as you indicated, the time frame for the task force to begin was April the 30th and there won't be a meeting before then. Okay, thanks, I understand that. I'm not gonna support the motion. I think we put the information out, we spent money to advertise, staff spent a lot of time putting this together, we've had legal advice. There's been a, a big investment already of time uh, from the people who spent the time to apply. Uh, we had 40 some people apply for the committee and um, I, I think... Uh, your, your Worship, the number of people, the. The application process and the number would become public knowledge. However, we must be careful not to discuss any of the closed meeting selection processes as we go forward. So we've had a number of people apply to the committee and um, spent the time to, to do some homework and make sure that they were free for those dates. So I'm not going to support the motion. I think we've put out a plan uh, to engage people in our community from all over the community. And um, we have a commitment of three meetings and I'd like us to, to follow through with the commitment that we have. Thank you, Councillor Arneson. Yes, thank you, Worship. Um, I think overall uh, I am supportive of deferring this. I think that the optics of the situation are important and if there's any sense that this is politicized in any way, I think it's more appropriate. I don't think anything is particularly lost because in fact, if a task force is meeting and putting together, um, putting forward uh, important public information for consideration for a council, uh, I'm just, you know, conjecture. I, I would more appreciate myself being on that committee if I knew that there was an actual council that was in play for the next four years who could consider this because there could be short, medium, and long-term propositions. I agree with the fact that um, more likely than not, because um, council has 100% discretion, some of these things may not be implemented, in fact, um, and but that's not the important consideration. The important consideration for me is I don't think any, anything would be lost by deferring this until such time as it was just past the election period. So I'm moving, or oh, sorry, I'm in support of deferring it because I think it's appropriate. Thank you, Councillor Sparrow. Yeah, I mean, we've gone through the process of, of asking applica applicants to apply and, and filling out the application and going through all the work on their side of things, they've um, they've done that, and we are now going to say, oh, you know, thank you, but we're we're not going to go forward with. I think that the time to do that would have been when we were first looking at doing uh, creating this, um, and uh, you know, I think we've gone down the road. We've had people apply. We have the three meetings. I, I do agree with the the end result and what we what comes of it, I think we'll probably, will most likely will end up being the next council who will take the information. But I think right now um, we've gone enough down the road that we can have uh, this go through with the three meetings that have been set, the dates, uh, April, um, May, and June, and, uh, and then have um, the report and all of that information provided to council. And at that point, we can then um, have that information be forwarded to the next council for their discussions and deliberations in the upcoming budget process, which I believe is actually put right into the, um, the motion and the, um, the, the reports that we've received. So I think that's uh, allowing that to go through and, uh, and having this process start is um, what I'm going to support. So I'm not going to support deferring it. Thank you. <clears throat> Council Long. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, there's a couple of things I'd like to say, and that is that there has been a lot of confusion, I would say, with certain members of the public that have contacted me, at least, about what this task force is going to accomplish in its short time and who can be eligible to be on it and who isn't. And without mentioning names or anything, it has not been a perfect process. And I might add, Your Worship, that this has also not been a unanimous decision by this council. It is not something that we can all clearly say that we all get behind at this point for various reasons, including the political, political aspect of it. And if you expect uh, a task force to be 
uh, effective, whereby all members of council need to be on it, because that is the way the bylaw is structured, then I think you need to have many, many very willing players at the table that are very satisfied with the process that's been followed, uh, feeling very comfortable about the results and, and where, where they may be applied, and you don't have that here, Your Worship. So it would be in great wisdom, I believe, of this council to defer this to the future, uh, where uh, this work can be put out far more effectively. And uh, if you don't have all the willing players at the table, how do you expect to really accomplish anything? I'm not saying that the council won't be cooperative, because that's what we have to do when a vote is taken. But it would be nice, and I think it's always the best, when decisions of council are made by a huge majority, a big majority of council, the majority of us agreeing to do something, technically 50-50 cuts it, I guess. But um, I think if you want to, to be effective, it'd be great if all of council can be behind it, and that is not the case here. Thank you, you know, for the speakers. Uh, a couple points. I just uh, thought I would uh, do a little digging here on the community charter, which is where I have to go back to once in a while just to help clarify what our role is here. And uh, under Section 115, it says responsibilities of council members. Every council member has the following responsibilities, and B is... is um, uh, I think I've gone to the wrong one. Is Sorry, 114, Council's governing body, uh, and it says under number two, section 114, number two, despite a change in its membership, the Council of a Municipality is a continuing body and may complete any proceedings started but not completed before the change. In other words, this council continues into the next council. Uh, and unlike um, our parliament and uh, legislative assemblies where uh, they drop a writ and everything stops, we have a duty to continue to govern. And striking a committee that's going to meet three times certainly is within our is within our mandate. And the other thing I'd like to point out is that, um, you know, the council has made a decision. We may not always agree with the decision that council makes. However, it is the will of council, and I would expect that every member of council would support a council decision, no matter how close or how, if it's unanimous or, or, or not. It's still a council decision, and that's what we're here to do. Um, I'd like to give this a chance. It sounds like there's some members of council who don't want to give it a chance, that there's some very good people in our community who have come forward, they're giving up of their time. They're willing to make this work. Why isn't that some members of council here are not willing to make it work? That I don't understand. I will uh, not support this because I think a lot of good work has been done and a lot of good people have applied. So with that, I'm going to call a question on this motion, which will be J1. And the motion is defeated uh, with Councillor Whitmarsh, Mayor Froze, Councillor Quelly, Councillor Sparrow opposed. Is there any other business? Councillor Qualley. Thank you. On the um, items distributed to Council on the 19th, there was a letter from a resident, uh, Mr. Dumain, in Walnut Grove, uh, concerned about the speed on 88th Avenue. I wonder if we can refer this letter to RCMP, and I wonder if we can also um, refer it back to staff for... Uh, perhaps a summer slowdown program on uh, 88th Avenue that would include the, um, you know, the flashing sign that says people's speed limits. Because it seems as soon as the weather improves in Walnut Grove or all over the municipality actually, but noticeably on 88th Avenue cars tend to pick up their speed. And it is a busy road, I get that, but people do speed. So I think just a short-term reminder of the speed limit on 88th Avenue might be helpful to certain people in the municipality so um, I'd like to move that letter is referred to staff for perhaps some ideas on just reminding people what the speed limit is on 80th on 88th Avenue I think you direction thank you okay Councilor Whitmarsh it, I'm just wondering if we uh, on that same one I, I think maybe you're referring to 88th coming into Fort Langley is that where you're referring to actually all of 88 um, all of 88 along um, uh, as you exit the freeway uh, from 88th heading, well, east to west or west to east, it doesn't matter. 88th Avenue seems to turn into a bit of a speedway um, as soon as the weather improves. And um, it's noisy for residents and it's and it's dangerous. There's a lot of pedestrians there and, and pedestrian crosswalks. So I, I'm not suggesting that speed be, you know, inhibited in any way other than just a reminder of the speed limit on that road. Just maybe through your worship to staff on this same point is 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 that a normal part of our summer process where we um, do have a sort of a campaign a summer campaign around speed particularly in the areas that we identify as being sort of more obvious speeding areas. 
uh, Your Worship, in this area, there's no typical process. It's really a matter of advising Speedwatch or the RCMP in terms of our requests, and we can then have them look at it. Ordinarily, we start with Speedwatch just to educate people, and if there is no meaningful decrease in the speed, then we go to enforcement. Okay, because I've had letters too on 96 coming into Fort Lang, the same issue, and just wondering if that's a township wide thing we'd identify as these sort of trouble spots and, and have a, some kind of campaign, or if we just choose one as Councillor Qualley suggesting here. Can I just add, sorry, Councillor Rubbish, there is uh, one of those flashing readers on 96th Ave as you approach Fort Langley that tells you what your speed is to remind residents. It says, I think you're a 50 zone there, and it does flash. Okay. With the Thank speed you. coming down um, the hill into Fort Langley and coming on 96th Avenue. So those already exist. Thank you. Councilor Davis. The question through to staff, um, maybe I'm uh, going to blindside you a little. Do we have an update on Labonte Road? I see they've put the styrofoam in the big hole and... Uh, and, it, and we're able to use it, and um, just an update. Does anybody know when it might be open for some um, trip? Two Sixteenth Street down to Glover. Yeah, uh, progress has been slowed because there's been a John Deere tractor seen on the road several times, and we've had to actually take some enforcement measures. We've tried Speed Watch, but now the RCMP are actually putting out a, a, a radar gun and trying to catch the perpetrator. Just trying to help <laughs> get things done. But. Yeah. The good news is that right now it has had significant advancements in terms of the construction. Um, the goal, uh, the original goal was to have it complete by October. Uh, there's been some attempt now to advance things because of weather and progress to date uh, that we hope to have it done by the uh, beginning of September. That may be a bit optimistic. And the issue right now, I think, as you've indicated, is some crossings of some ditches, creeks, and streams. So that has to take, care, take place during the fisheries window. And as well, there'll be a roundabout that has to yet to be constructed on Glover Road at uh, the entrance to the university. So that will be the, the final phases, and they hope to do much of that over the next few months. Okay, thank you. Any other business? Seeing none, motion terminate. Termination. Mr. Davis, second by Councilor Qualley. All in favor? Vote is carried.